for five winters now. You have hidden from the walls. Now, I will make you a warrior again. Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno, where there's one man, one mission, no chance. We are here for the UK premiere of Johnny English Reborn. MI7 wants you on the first flight back to London. The world's greatest spy. Johnny English. Work hard, play hard. Is back. So tell us about your experience working on Johnny English Reborn, literally. Uh... You know, this is the first time I work with Rowan, and uh, somehow a lot of sort of uh, comedy, uh, sort of comedian's sort of reputation, sometimes it's very difficult in a sort of normal time. But he wasn't like that at all. Very, very kind, and just, just I, I really enjoyed working with him. You're, you're, you're his master, aren't you? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the master teaching the master, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right, absolutely. And uh, so, I don't know. Um, he was so funny, in a way, in the film. But normal time, he was quite serious and very intelligent as well. But, uh, yeah. Did, was it, was it a, a certain challenge because he's applying his comedy to a, cert, a different kind of um, mythology? Because he's obviously... Sort of yoga and and all the the kind of Buddhist philosophies and he's applying that. So do, does that make that more of a challenge? Yeah, because my part is more like a serious. So it makes more funny when he comes up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because so, you're playing it straight. Yeah, absolutely. So of course, j just hint of sort of movement of my eyes or something like that. But I'm serious. Um, I should say maybe he is serious. Do you know? I mean, he means my part. <laughs> So that is a good contrast with, uh, with, between me and him. You've been away for some time, English. But you haven't been forgotten. You made a laughing stock out of this service once. Not on my watch. Clear? It's always fun for an actor to play a baddie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, much better than be a, a bad guy in life, I guess. <laughs> much funner. And there's a, there is a history between your character and the Johnny English character, isn't there? Can yes. you share a little bit more about that with us, please? Well, he has a few arch enemies, and, and Karlenko is one of them. And then, at a certain stage, he, he, he tries to find him and meets with him and tries to get something from him. I'm trying not to spoil anything. Uh, with not too much success. Let's say that. Is it, is it nice for you as an actor as well? Because there is a backstory there for you to work from as well. Yes, yes, and uh, but it's it's mainly the 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 scenes that that we did. The backstory I think plays more for Rowan than, than for me. And and also Rowan is a, a, is very fond, I believe, of, of a a lot of rehearsing. Yes. So how how is that for you? Does that that does that spoil the moment or no, by over rehearsing? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, it's it's a lesson in comedy to see how it works and 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 who 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 better than Rowan to to show you how it how it's done and it's it's incredible to see how much effort and time and uh, meticulousness is being put into creating these little seemingly uh, light moments uh, by him. Sir, the Chinese man in spectacles. Contact. Evening. Psst. Your grandmother is sick. Well, she's dead, that's how sick she is. Can I ask you, did you voice the, the car? I am the voice of Royce. I can say things like, command accepted. <laughs> you know, as soon as I heard, I thought, that's Mariana Fostrop. And I've looked everywhere to see, um, to, to try and find some kind of they acknowledgement. they me there'd be a huge credit. I can't believe it. They've let me down so badly. Used and abused. Honestly, I think that's the life of an actress, which is what I now consider myself to be, obviously. But my kids are here and they're going to be so excited because I haven't told them. What happened? I was afraid I'd been edited out. You know, that happens a lot, I hear, in this business. So I didn't want to take anything for granted. What was the process like? It was really good fun, but kind of scary. You go into a... A, rec a sound recording room, but where normally when you record voiceovers and things, you're in a little booth on your own. But there you're in the big room with the director and the woman in charge of the sound and the whole thing, and they're sort of directing you, so you're having to sort of act it to the screen. It's very bizarre, but I could get used to it. Absolutely 
wonderful. Have you actually seen yourself? Uh, no, I, no, not. I mean, I saw it when I was because you record it to the to the picture. But I didn't see the whole movie. I just saw the bits I'm in. So now I'm looking forward to seeing it all together. And my kids are mad about Johnny English anyway. So it's, it's going to be fun. And what better than aircon on a day like this? He's an expert in martial arts. <laughs> I imagine that the, the prerequisite for you as a composer was that you had to make this very English. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose uh, it, it, parts of it needed to be very much like that. And uh, But there's a big part of it that, that feels like a, a traditional Hollywood score, big big symphonic music that, that we recorded in Abbey Road Studios. Um, uh, that was really good fun. But but the score was really diverse. We we did a, a, a lot of uh, brass band music in, in the in the James Bond style, um, and uh, and that was really fun. And I suppose that's what you associate with with James Bond and English spy movies. And uh, and we also did a lot of rock and roll stuff. And we worked with Tim Wheeler from Ash, who played a lot of the guitars, and Andy Burrows, uh, formerly of Razorlight, and uh, he and uh, who's a brilliant artist in his own right. And he played all the drums on it. So actually, the the score spanned a lot of a lot of different styles, and it was really fun. And what source material did you kind of go to to get your inspiration? Um, I, you know, I, I, tr I really tr wanted to find an original voice and I got hired on the project whilst they were still shooting it and so there was a lot of time to think of uh, what the theme might be and I just tried to, just tried to find my own voice with it really. A master of disguise. Now you're playing Agent Tucker, yeah. and you are the new era of MI7, am yes. I correct? Yes, 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 I, I am the new era, which is all about books and guidelines and uh, reconstruction missions online to Kazakhstan. And I've been taken on, uh, Pegasus, played by Jenny Nansen, has taken me on the mission with Johnny to make sure he doesn't mess up more so. I was going to say, it, it, it seems to me that you're there really to look after Johnny English, aren't yeah, you? Is that yeah. how you saw the character yeah, as yeah, well? Yeah, very much to look after him and make sure that he's on a straight and narrow. But obviously Johnny English being Johnny English, he doesn't listen to me. I don't know how, I don't know why. And you've also got to work with, with a, a, a comic actor with decades and decades of experience. What was that like for you as a young actor and what did you take from that? I, taught, I took the fact that I should take my job more seriously. And, uh, <laughs> and it's a job and not a laugh. And, uh, and yeah, because he's really serious and really professional about what he does, and so it's amazing in that in, in that sense to see someone that takes so comedy so seriously. So it's really cool. And an agent in total control. Do you know how to fly these, sir? It's all coming back to me. Whoa, 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 whoa. I never thought that I would be the prime minister. It just goes to show that anyone can make it. Oh, I tell you, what's the beauty of acting, isn't it? Yeah, it's like being like when they say every, anyone can become the president in America. You go, that's not true. There's a very strong sort of comic scene between yourself and and, and Rowan. Yeah. How is it for you as an actor, kind of connecting to the rhythm of that comedy and just getting the timing of that right? Yeah, I, to be honest, I was all at sea. You know, at the beginning, you only know it's like one of those things you throw yourself into. You're never quite sure how it's going to turn out. And I was a little bit worried because you know you're amongst these kind of comedy greats and and you're expecting them to sort of come up to you after and just go, listen, you know, when I'm doing my thing, don't do that or or don't be like that, you know. And actually, Rome was really sweet. At the end of the first day, he went, you know, I, I like the way you're kind of like, you're sort of gauging it between, you know, like sort of responding, but not sort of overdoing it and not sort of, it, it, I think it's just something that you gauge as you're doing, you know, it's a sort of a matter of taste, really. I did, I did get the impression he gave a lot of creative control to this film as well, didn't he? That, that he had a lot of creative control. I, I imagine so, but that didn't take away from that sort of lovely generosity of, yeah, I think you have to have a, a sort of sense of equality when you're working with any actor, you know, for things to work, you know, once they're actually on the floor and doing it, they're just really giving and kind of, they at least give you a sense of equality, even if it's not true. Now, he's about to face his fiercest enemy yet. There is a plot to kill the Premier. Time is of the essence. Where are we on security? English. Give me 24 hours. Dominic, because Rowan gives such a big performance, does that give you more as an actor to work from? Uh, yeah, oh, certainly, yeah. Yeah, everything everything helps when, when you're with a master, and he's a master, really, so he, um, yeah, it gives you much more to work on, and you just react and try not to laugh. <laughs> My country needs me. It's Johnny English. Let's kick some bottom. I'm I think it's slight, I think it's 18 actually. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what was that like? Uh, well, we were child stars then, of course. <laughs> of course. <you> were. <laughs>
<laughs> well, it was great. I mean, you know, I mean, we we stay in touch and we see each other. Um, but it was but it was fabulous because Rowan is, apart from being extremely funny, he's also uh, uh, a, a wonderful character actor. So we're working on that level mainly, you know, and it's, and uh, he's incredibly professional and very focused and a real perfectionist. And I'm really lazy, so we balance each other out. Well, I was going to say, Rowan obviously is funny in this, but so are you. I mean, oh. you, you, you are the gadget king. Yes, absolutely. You're, you're sins, actually, aren't you? Tell us a little bit more. Well, Patch Quartermain is, um, yeah, he is the Q from the Bond films, really. But uh, um, it all, it's all, his trying the stuff out on himself is rather disastrous. Uh, the, the other thing that you're, never, that you're not quite sure about for kind of half the movie is whether he's a goodie or a baddie, you know, kind of, which is great. I mean, that's really nice to have that element in it as well. You know, so it's, I mean, it's nice to be able to do the funny stuff, but also have a proper character and a journey and a story. You know. Exactly. So, and also you, um, what are you up to next? I'm about to start doing a, a comic, comedy mini series for the BBC called uh, The Bleak Old Shop of Stuff, which is a kind of uh, very, very clever, very funny Dickens spoof. I'm a horrible villain. I shall look forward to that, Thank Tim. You. Thank you very much. Pleasure. A little intelligence <laughs> goes a long way. <gasps> Johnny. Johnny English seems so pure at heart. He seems to be a character that you would want to revisit and re-explore. Uh, yeah, no, I like him. I think I, I think he's a much more likable person actually than Mr. Bean is. Mr. Bean, I think, is a pretty unpleasant, selfish child. Uh, whereas Johnny is, is quite a decent guy actually. I I, th I think he's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, he's a good heart. You know, he's not as good as he thinks he is. That's his basic problem. But beyond that, he means well. It's the killer from Hong Kong. Murderous crow. I've got her. You old hag. She's the killer. She's my mother! Granny! Well, that's it from everyone's favourite blundering Bond, Johnny English. I'm Claire Bueno, and you're watching Premier Scene. Johnny English Reborn.